Hi guys, Emma. Welcome back to Creature Feature. So, been away for a little while, but I want to thank everyone for all the amazing feedback you guys have given me. This has uh, been a really cool experience. It's been really great to hear what everyone has to say, and uh, hopefully we can keep going forward with it. Anyway, I brought a new friend for you guys. This is Tripod. Say hi. <laughs> He's probably a little more common than some of the buddies I've been bringing out recently. A lot of Herpetologists will probably recognize this little guy. He is a bearded dragon. These little dudes are indigenous all over Australia. You can find them in places such as the savanna, drylands, foresty shrub areas, but they're super, super predominant out there. I actually had the pleasure of going to Australia a couple of years ago. We actually found one in the wild. He was not as chill as tripod. As you can see, this is one chill little dude. This is pretty normal for tripod, quite honestly, and most bearded dragons, they have really, really good temperaments. They're pretty mellow, as you can see. He has that really cool, expressive little face. A lot of people like looking at him. He kind of looks like he's smiling. And if you watch his eyes, he's pretty expressive. He'll kind of take in the world around him. And because of that, they're very, very popular pets. Lots of classrooms have them. Lots of parents come up to me and say, my kid loves reptiles. What do you guys recommend? And much like my, my ball python Stanley that I brought in a while back, same thing. I actually really highly recommend these bearded dragons. They're great little guys, very expressive, very fun. They're hardy. They're not super small, but they're not too big. Bearded dragons' tops will get up about two feet long, and that does include the tail. So, cool fun facts about tripod. Here you're going to this little dude is covered in spikes, but whoa, watch this. Whoa! <laughs> they're not sharp at all. Much like a lot of my reptile friends, his little spikes are made out of keratin. We talked about that for snakes, same thing on his fingernails. And they're pretty flexible. This makes a lot of sense because when you figure these little guys are running into shrubs, if the spikes were not flexible and were more rigid, these little guys would get stuck on pretty much everything. Bearded dragons get their name because you can see that he has that cute little chin right here. And when he gets angry or feels threatened, his chin will turn a dark black. Bearded dragons, despite being lizards, not being able to talk, are pretty expressive little animals. Unlike you and me, we nod our heads, they're, we're approving of something. Bearded dragons, when they nod their heads, they want to pick a fight with you. So these little guys, their chins will turn dark black, they'll poof up their spikes, and they'll angrily nod their heads up and down. Now, for you and me, that looks a little bit silly, but to a bigger animal that's going to try to gobble him up, remember, Australia is full of dingoes, goanna, snakes, all sorts of things where this little guy looks really, really tasty. He wants to look as threatening as possible so other animals leave him alone. On top of nodding his head, he also does a behavior a lot of humans can do. He can hand wave. Many bearded dragons will actually hold up one of their hands and wave it upside down. And sort of like you and me, actually, it's, it's a friendly gesture. They're usually doing that as a sign of submission. These little guys are incredibly, incredibly territorial. In fact, a lot of people are asking, well, why is his name Tripod? Mm, I'll get that out of your head. I work with kids. <laughs> his name is Tripod a little more obviously. This poor little guy here is missing his leg. And if you look carefully, he's also missing the tip of his tail, unlike a lot of other his leather lizard brethren. It does not grow back. As I was saying a little bit earlier, they can be kind of aggressive, and as you might have guessed with stories about them showing dominance or submission, they're also a very territorial little creature, and unfortunately, Tripod's previous owner didn't know this. He thought Tripod could use a roommate, and they had a very bad altercation, and poor Tripod unfortunately had to have his leg removed. So he is one of our many rescue animals we have at my job. A lot of our animal friends do come, up as, come to us as rescues. People think, oh, it's cool to have a lizard, a snake, a rabbit, and the thing that I always try to teach people about animals is animals are fascinating. Animals are great. Animals as pets can be very rewarding, but they are a lot of work, and you need to look into that, or else you will get poor little instances here like Tripod. If it makes you guys feel better, Tripod is doing very, very good right now. We gave him a little bachelor pad. <laughs> he doesn't have to worry about getting into fights anymore. A lot of people like to ask me what these little dudes eat. These little dudes are omnivores like you and me, so Tripod eats a huge amount of collard greens, carrots. He does have a sweet tooth, so on occasion he is allowed to have some grapes and bananas. However, they do also on occasion enjoy the bug or two. However, they will also eat pinkies, which is a polite way of saying baby mice. So they're not super picky eaters, so, you know, they eat pretty healthy, I'd say. Got some veggies, got some protes. They do pretty good in their lives. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for Creature Feature. I'll try to update this more frequently. And uh, this is Emma and Tripod. Hey! <laughs> Signing off. All right, thanks, friends.